Hi everybody, it's Tatiana and this is The Map of Time by Felix J. Palm. This novel was translated from Spanish to English by Jane mm -mm, Nick Kester. I don't know why I wanted to call him James. I have been reading this what feels like forever. I picked it up during 24 and 48 last year and I want to say I got like 50 pages in or somewhat and stopped reading it because I wasn't making progress in this as quickly as I wanted to. That being said, that did not have anything to do with me, I don't think. This novel just is extremely verbose, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if that has to do with the translator or if that's actually how it was written. Literally, at some points in reading this, it felt like either Palma or Castaire, Caster, sat with a thesaurus beside them to see how many different ways they could say the same thing over a course of a few different sentences. I haven't even given you all a synopsis of this because the synopsis on the back is extremely vague and I kind of want to keep that as it is except for one part that I'm about to tell you after I read the synopsis. Characters real and imaginary come vividly to life in this whimsical triple play of intertwined plots in which a skeptical H.G. Wells is called upon to investigate purported incidents of time travel and save lives and literary classics including Dracula and the Time Machine from being wiped from existence. What happens to the present if we rewrite the past? Felix J. Palma explores this provocative question, weaving a historical fantasy as imaginative as it is exciting, a story full of love and adventure that transports readers from a haunting setting in Victorian London to a magical reality where centuries collide and writers and a writer's mind seems to pull all the strings. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is this whole historical fantasy part of this. I dare say that the only part of this that is historical may be the use of the names of the people who were actually real. Like H.G. Wells is a character in the story. The Time Machine story, novel, does exist in this story. However, the issue with making it historical fantasy is weaving in fact with your fantastical fiction. That is the issue that I have with this. When you take someone like Joseph Merrick, whose story is not uh, unknown and can easily be researched and you take so much of what is his actual story and how his life really went and wipe it out in a way that you didn't you didn't have to to make the story go if that makes any sense like there are 60 pages about in the first part of this story that really could have been done without. The purpose of Merrick's appearance in the story is to provide one object that is alluded to or spoken about during the course of the huge fallacy that is Merrick's story as rendered in this novel and then it comes up again at the end by a character who could have used something else other than that to identify that that himself to the person that he's talking to. It's, I don't know if that made any sense whatsoever, but there's this huge part of Joseph Merrick's life that's put into this story that there's no way it could be real at the point when it, he uh, when he surfaces in this story. There's no way. So that bothered me. This really could be a serialized novel. It is three stories that are interwoven together. And although I have never read in its entirety Hugo's Les Mis, the way that the stories in Les Mis, I've seen the musical repeatedly. Um, I do want to read the book eventually, but it's fucking huge. <laughs> the way that the stories in Les Mis intertwine are, is kind of the way that the stories intertwine in this novel. So it's really three novellas that have been put together to make this one story. Of all of the characters in the story, and there are quite a few, there's only one that I didn't like. And the one that I didn't like was the omniscient, omnipresent narrator who was so full of himself that, oh, I just... 
because well you you know they weren't aware of what happened of what happened but because I see all and I know everything that happened let me share this bit of information with you that was like two lines that could have been omitted and it would have made the narrator a much more likable person understood its purpose but could have just done without the inflated I am so important and I'm going to make this story one because without me there would be no story having said all of that I enjoyed the story that with every all of the negatives that I have I really enjoyed the story I'm surprised that I enjoyed the story, considering the fact that it begins with this jerk of a narrator, this jerk of a narrator is in the middle, and the jerk of a narrator is at the end. It's set in the 1800s in London, and it starts during, I can't even think of what it, what it is actually called in time, but the time of Jack the Ripper. And the way that it's in, oh, this is like really, really bad, of me but when I'm reading a story that is like about killing I like reading the details of the gore of the scene but you couldn't pay me to watch it on television or in a movie it's just too much like the whole what is it Hannibal the whole beginning of the movie where there's this person that's hanged they're eviscerated and then hanged and as they drop on the noose like their entrails flush out onto the ground from the slit in their stomach like I could have vomited in the theater but <laughs> reading it in a story is extremely palatable to me I don't understand why I can take it in one aspect and not the other but it's kind of the same with horror not a big fan of the horror horror movie genre anyway I digress that's where it the story takes is the story starts and then it develops from there with if you could remove the 60 pages because that's I promise you those 60 pages has absolutely nothing to do with, or the, excuse me, that 60 pages the story can do without. And I fully believe that it was used to pad the story to get it to be a longer tome. Because without that 60 pages, this would be about 540 pages long. And without the narrator, it will probably cut out another 20 pages. I shit you not. There is one thing. If you follow me on Instagram, then you saw me post a picture of it. And that was also, it was not as prevalent in the book as I thought it was going to be. Because it bothered me when I saw it. But there's this allusion to, not allusion, description of the smell of burned butterfly wings. And I'm like, how the hell is that a relatable odor for a reader. Who the hell is burn has taken the time to catch a butterfly and then burn its wings and sniff that shit. How am I supposed to know what cinch butterfly wings smell like? Or anyone else. If you know what it smells like, let me know in the comments below and don't say it smells like cinch butterfly wings because again, the problem with using that reference. That's all that I have. To discuss about that book. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me talk to me in the comments below if you've read this novel, if you have any questions about it, uh, if you feel the same way that I do about this asshole of a narrator as you read the novel. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good week, weekend. Whenever you see this video, peace out.